I have got a very exciting person to introduce you to today. This is Kelly. Now, Kelly is a super yacht captain. Hello, Kelly. Hi! It's very it's good nice. To be here. Yes, no, it's good, good to be here. We've, so happy to be here. We've been trying to do this for ages, haven't we? Uh, yes, so, I know. Um, yeah, so we're grabbing this opportunity. We've only got 30 minutes, but uh, I put a post up on Aquaholic um, a few days ago, and I said that I am meeting Kelly. She's a super yacht uh, captain. What questions would you like to ask? So these oh questions gosh. are not from me. These are from the Aquaholic audience. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. So I am going to go through these. And to do it at the Monaco Yacht Show, even to, better. Perfect. I can stop sharing with you now because you're here. So that's good. And I can find my questions. Aren't I organised? Here we go. So um, this is going to kind of take us back to the beginning a little bit. So, um, to be honest, so Malcolm White, 6144, says, would you kindly ask her what inspired her to go through all the test exams to become a charter captain? And adds, and good for her, 10 out of 10. And somebody else has said, what in, uh, oh, Mr. Sulas, 2000, said, what inspired you to be a captain? And then R1DDL324 said, how long did it take to become a captain and what was the process that you went through? So it's really, where did you come into this? How did you do it? Why did you do it? No, this is a great question. First and foremost, I want to say that I came from the furthest thing yachting. So I grew up in literally middle America in the middle of a cornfield. So um, I always like to share that with people because for anybody that's thinking, oh, I live too far from the water. Or, oh, I could never do anything like that. Yep. I did. Yeah. So if you are landlocked somewhere and you are thinking that this is something that you want to do or don't even have any idea that you might want to do it, I totally applaud you. So go for it. Yeah. So I... Um, and you've proven it can be done. Yes, I have proven that it can be yeah, done. Absolutely. So moving from the, the farm in central Indiana to the east coast of the USA, yeah. where I got my master's in chemistry, um, and I'll kind of fast forward a little bit. Yeah took on um, a teaching job in chemistry at a local community college. Uh -huh. Didn't really know just how close to the coast I was. I just didn't really realize that I was I was teaching at one of the major ports in between, in between on the East Coast, in between Norfolk and Charleston in a, in a little town called Beaufort, North Carolina. Uh -huh. And someone that was very involved in the town, just a, a huge community member, befriended me and said, hey, you know, let me show you around. I see you're new here. So she invited me to a party on what I had no idea was a yacht. Right. Okay. And I, I liken it to having grown up on the farm around heavy machinery and loving mechanics and working with my hands. And when I stepped on, I walked up to it first and I said, is that a yacht? And when I stepped literally just onto the back deck, I said, this is what I want to do. Really? That's it, fantastic. It was the it was the likeness to the tractors and the heavy machinery and the um, I've always had an affinity for well I was a welder for a while I grew up on the farm I I I always had an affinity for working with my hands yeah. and working with heavy equipment and there was just something that kind of just overcame me because I literally I didn't even know what a yacht was yeah. and I'm just standing on the back deck and I'm like I want to do this wow and so it just it it snowballed and quickly went to me touring the engine room and I'm like well these are nothing but marinized tractor engines yeah. to then you know watching the captain operate the boat we went for a cruise that day and operate the boat and the hand-eye coordination that it was and how if you split the gears this way the boat turns one way you yep. split them the other way the boat turns another way and I was just like this is what I want to do. Wow. So I double dipped for a while. I was running um, the boat out of the same town that I was teaching in. Right. And the boat's busy seasons were my off season as an instructor. So it worked. I mean, I was crazy busy uh, for a few years. And then it finally got to the point to where a couple things happened. I always felt that as a teacher, that since you are literally molding future leaders that you have to be 110% passionate about it. And I always said the, the minute that I lose my passion for teaching, I will do something else. Mm -hmm. And I still love teaching, hence the captain's classroom and all yep. of the content that I have, but I wasn't getting that intrinsic reward anymore in the classroom. And what I found then, and I love to learn. So to who asked me what inspired me, mm -hmm. it was it was my own needed intrinsic reward. I I need to be challenged, I need to be learning, I need to be growing constantly. And I saw with with yachting that every day was different. Yeah, every day yeah, was for different. Sure. 
um, the, a completely new craft for me to learn. And what's funny is how I fell back into some of my teaching, but I'm, I'm teaching my crew all the time. And they say to me, come on, give us the close note version, not the three hour lecture. <laughs> so they, they always make me dial it back, but then, you know, but how did fast you actually, forward. How did you start? You can't have just said, okay, I'm gonna be a captain and become a captain. How did you, you know, actually, did you start as a deckhand that, or? That, that's something that I say, you always have to have, walk around with your eyes wide open looking right. for opportunity. And I literally, that day, when I stepped on the back deck of that boat, I saw an opportunity. And the opportunity was that it was an owner-operated vessel at the time, and I could see he was hosting a party for some friends, and a lot was going on in the hustle and bustle, and I just jumped in right away, and I said, can I help you? You look a little overwhelmed. Wow. So, again, keeping your eyes open for opportunity. Yeah, yeah. And when I showed interest, it was a combination of me showing interest and him needing help. He just scooped me up right under his wing. Right. And I said, well, this is what I want to do. And he says, well, all right, if you want to be a captain, you're going to have to spend a little bit of time in every department. Right. And so I spent a lot of time in engineering. I spent a lot of time, obviously, at the helm. Um, but galley, not so much. But yeah. I spent my fair share of, of time in the interior. Yeah. So I guess I started as a deck steward, if you will, yeah. working inside and outside. And just, I, I, another thing is that, that I always say is the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Yep. I asked at every opportunity that I could for home time. Right. I would always ask. Sometimes it, the situ situation didn't warrant it, and, yep. and, and he needed to, to maneuver the vessel, but yep. I asked every time I could yep. to get time at the helm. And so, and I was just thirsty for that knowledge and for that opportunity. And a combination of that and a combination of him seeing that, and he didn't have he didn't have to he didn't have to be the mentor that he was but he was an amazing mentor and I just took that opportunity and I ran with it so in terms of the technicality of how how you go about getting your captain's license yes it takes sea time yeah and it it so I was cranking up all of that sea time accumulating all of that sea time and um, then taking the classes right so at some point I had enough sea time to where I could go and I could take the course and I could test. Right. So I got my first license, my six pack license is what, what that first introductory license is in the Coast Guard. I did that and then I accumulated some more sea time and I got my 100 ton. Then I some more sea time, got my 200 ton. And then I got my 500 ton. And now, literally, just walking over here, Nick, I checked my phone and I had an email from the Coast Guard saying that I am approved to test at the Coast Guard to get my 1,600, 3,000 Wow, so, that's insane. So, so yes. what size boat would that take you up to? Oh, I can run almost anything then. Once wow. I get my 3,000, yep. once I get my 3,000, I can, I can, I can, right now with a 500 ton, I can probably run, I would say max 150, right. 150 feet, yep. yeah, feet, um, but then I, once you get a 3,000 ton license, you can really, you can ramp it up, but it's been, Classes and classes and classes. It's it's so it's a combination to answer that question um, of sea time mm -hmm. and coursework. Right. And, and how, the larger the license, the more coursework that you need. So from when you started, say when you first took the helm to where you are now, how long has that been? Fifteen years. Fifteen years. I don't so know okay. Where so that how? Time went. And how long to get your first skipper's license? That first one, the six pack. Five years. Five years. Okay. So that's interesting. It gives people an idea of time scale. Yeah. Yeah. I could have cranked it out a little bit quicker, but yeah. I was also double dipping and working another job at the same time. And um, so, so yeah, it's uh, really technically for that first license is 360 days at sea. But when you're running um, a yacht, 360 days, it takes a minute to. To accumulate all of course, that time. you're not there. It's not yeah. like a ferry where you're out every day, is it? Right, exactly. Uh, so it takes yeah. a bit to accumulate that time. So brilliant. Let's let's we should touch on the boat actually that you currently skipper because of, are you still skippering Freddie? I'm not. No. Oh, oh. Uh, yes, and that's yeah. what everybody says. Go on. When everybody says, "Oh, you're not," okay. they, 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 I get the same response every time. So when I met Kelly, just to just to explain, Kelly was the uh, the captain of a 108 foot San Lorenzo, which I filmed in Fort Lauderdale. It's a boat called Kelly. Boat called Kelly. Try again. <laughs> boat called Freddie. And. Uh, Kelly's called Kelly, of course, um, and and I met Kelly when I was when I was touring that boat. So um, 
So what are you, what are you doing now? I know, everybody's in disbelief. But, so I was with Freddie for um, a long time. I was with Freddie for a couple of years, which yeah. in this industry, a captain sticking around somewhere for a, a couple of years is, is a long time. And you were at the Bahamas, I think, weren't you? Yeah, so we, we were technically based in Fort Lauderdale, but we were never there. We were always in the Bahamas. We yeah. probably spent about nine months out of the year in the Bahamas. Yeah. Uh, ran on average 20 week-long charters a year. Wow. Um, so we were cranking them out and um, loved it. I, I love I love the charter game. I love the challenge of getting a new set of guests every week and trying to provide and show them a great time. Um, it's just, it's really my tempo. Yeah. But I got an offer I couldn't refuse on a private boat. Right, oh, so you're going away from the charter world. Yes, I know. Okay. I can't believe it, Nick. This, yeah. is, this is my first time yeah, yeah, yeah. running private. Um, it's a 108 foot Pershing. Right. Um, so I'm going from, well, Freddie wasn't slow, oh, but yeah. 108 foot Pershing is a lot faster. How it's, fast? Uh, oh, I think she'll do 38. Wow, that's yeah. a lot of speed for well, a big boat. She's triple surface drive, so, yeah. so my engineer tells me that, uh -huh. and some other people have told me that it's one of the biggest in its class with triple surface drives yeah, on yeah. it. So yeah. I'm super excited about that. Um, so, yeah, a change of pace, but I think it's going to be just as busy because yeah. the family likes to explore at about the pace I was chartering at. Right. So I'll still get that. Yeah, you know, for I'll sure. still get that because I, I don't like to be tied to the dog. I, I no, like, no, no, no. That's not what you're waiting for, is it? To sit no. there yeah, no, it's right. not, I, I love to move and um, we've got uh, a couple more vessels than, than other than the Pershing, but I'm super excited. That's brilliant. Well, congratulations. Well, thank you. Uh, on that and the Coast Guard. You know, well, thank well. you. That's great. Thank you. Let's find you another question. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, what yearly certificates do you need to maintain has been asked by Samantha Forney. Is there anything you need to update regularly? Yeah, so that's a really good question. So there's your basic safety training course that, that you take to get started in the industry, which is um, your, your, your fire, your first aid, um, and I know I'm forgetting a couple parts of that. There's yeah. like five parts to it. Sure. But anyways, look up the basic safety training course. Yeah. And so you all take that to get started, and then you renew that every five years. Then um, radar for a Coast Guard license, you take that and you renew that every five years as well. There's some other courses like rescue boat that you have to renew every five years as well. So, and then um, my medical certificate, uh, when I'm running on my international or my STCW license has to be updated every two years. So they have right. to make sure that I'm healthy and that kind of thing. So it's a lot of the classes, you 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 take them the one time. Right. And then you've and then you're met done. that. Yeah. yeah, you're done. And But then there's a few of them, a handful of them that I just listed that you have to update every five years. I presume you stagger those. You don't get to five years and have to do all of them. You'll do one one year and one the next year and one the next year. Well, yeah. it's funny because I can tell when I was hammering out a bunch of classes because I'm like, oh my God, they're all doing <laughs> They all come at once, yeah. <laughs> I can see that. And I'm like, I should have done a better job at spreading these out. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, a uh, question from uh, Graham R UK. Where is the absolute best area you would recommend for sun, beauty, and water sports, and where's the best for adventure? Oh my god, Exumas, Bahamas, hands yeah. down. You yeah. can't be any better than that. Fair enough. You, you cannot. I know there's a ton of other places in this world that I haven't been, and I don't care what you say. You <laughs> cannot get any better than the Exumas, Bahamas. It's just brilliant. Perfect, perfect. Um, any tips to get a last minute charter bargain? Oh, off season. All right. Yeah. 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 So in the off season, you're you're gonna get a bargain. Um, depends on where you're going to. So I know there's some some bargains with the actually Bahamas folks going on right now. Right. And uh, so yeah, any time that you're you're willing to book in the off season uh -huh. or towards the end of the season, you'll get a bargain. What would you say if you think? How much do you save? Uh, I've seen some save as much as twenty percent. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. Um, oh, here's a good one. This is from One Frazer. What do you think about below decks? Is it realistic? I love that question. <laughs> I bet you get asked that all the time. I love you? that question. Yeah. And I just, I just did, um, I, I just did a, a, a video for my own Instagram, my my own social media channel. Which we must Instagram. mention. Well, before we forget, what is, what is uh, your Instagram? Yes. So at Captain underscore Kelly J Gordon uh -huh. on Instagram, TikTok. YouTube and LinkedIn. Perfect. So there we go. please, please give me a follow there. We'll put a link in the description. Thank, yeah. thank you. And so I just, I just did a reel about below deck, yeah. and and I, I chuckled to myself because I said, 
there are days that I swear we just filmed a full on live episode of <laughs> on my own vessel. No there way. are days that I'm just like, oh, the drama that we had on going on today. Yeah. No, um, for real, I I don't have. Fortunately, I I'm one of the very few dry boats in the industry. Right. I don't drink myself, and um, my crew members really don't either. Okay. Maybe once a month, yeah. they'll go out and they'll have a beer and drink something like that. So I run a dry boat. In terms of professionalism, there is no bullying. There is no sexual harassment. But it has taken me a long time to build right. That is not saying that some of the shenanigans you see on Below Deck haven't sprinkled in and out of my boats over the years. Yeah. But they're gone. Do you think that's yeah, like an exaggeration though? Blow decks is, is kind of an exaggeration well, think about of what it, goes it's on. TV. Yeah, they're gonna edit it's, the best bits yeah, on that. Yeah, it's TV. Bits. You have to exaggerate it. Yeah. I mean, who's gonna wanna watch a boring show? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So to answer the question, um it, do some of those shenanigans happen? Yes. Um, and, and am I on a mission to address some of the thornier topics like the sexual harassment, the bullying, the drug and alcohol abuse? It's uh, unfortunately prevalent in our industry. Okay. It's not on my boat just because I won't tolerate it. But in terms of below deck, when you when you see um, crew coming back in the midst of a charter plastered or hooking up or something like that, I've never heard of a charter that that happens on. Right. Now, when you hit the dock and charter's off or the boss is off, some of the crew can get pretty wild. Yeah. Um, so, so there are some very similar realities in the industry to below deck but not at that exaggeration not understood. at that level. Yeah. it's a yeah. tv show. it's ramped up yeah understood but let me tell you what i like yeah i don't just like it. i i i because for people like myself that grew up or have grown up in the middle of the country yeah. and have never seen a yacht they've never seen a boat Below Deck shows them something else to dream about, a career that might fit them. Yeah, for that sure. They otherwise, when it exactly it illuminates it, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. And it's um, it's as as sticky as as, as some parts, and as, as somewhat dark as some parts of this industry can be. There's not a day that I haven't woken up ready to go to work. Right. I love my job, the people, the relationships. Um, Look, here we are, away from our home countries. I'm all the way across the pond in Monaco, and, and you're here. Like, if I needed something, I could literally walk out onto the to the dock here and probably bump into somebody that I know. So the relationships that you build in this industry are just they're amazing. Yeah, that's true. It's a, it's such a everyone has a has a shared passion, don't they? Yes, I think. and it's such a tight knit, close little community. It really is. Brilliant. Okay, let's see what else we've got. I know you're a bit short of time and we're a bit short of time, so we're going to race through it a little bit. Um, oh, here's a good one. It, uh, this is from uh, Martin. He says, if you weren't a super yacht captain, what would you be? A veterinarian. <laughs> That's there an easy one. Okay. That's an easy one. Brilliant. Um, a, a couple will rattle through here. Hack Droid, Hacked Droid says, what luxuries can you enjoy on the yacht when the yacht's not working. So if you've not got the boss on board or a charter on board, are you able to play with the jet skis? Are you able to sit in the hot tub? Is there any, any of the luxuries that you're allowed to enjoy off duty, as it were? We are, we are. And that's a decision that, that I make um, myself. And uh, I try to take the, the crew out on what I call morale days. You know, the guys, obviously, they love to fish. So whenever we have downtime and they want to take the tinder out and they want to go fishing, they go. Yep. Uh, we don't have a hot tub at the moment, but if we did and we wanted to enjoy it, I, I would absolutely um, let them. If they want to take the jet skis out or they want to go water skiing, no problem. Um, now, the chances of them doing that a whole lot, um, probably pretty slim because we do that all day, every day. Yeah. So when we get time off, um, yeah, sometimes it's the last thing we just, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but no, I try to make sure that that um, the crew have time to play on the on the very toys that they're constantly launching. Perfect, that's a good answer. Okay, um, uh, what else have we got here? Um, Mark Turner says, I would love to ask. How many hours does she put in, and does she usually put in more hours than, than like in a normal job, as it were? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, but it's um, a job you live, isn't it? It is. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. It's very much a lifestyle, and um, it's funny because here recently I've had uh, quite a few members from the commercial industry reach out to me and consider getting into yachting, 
and they come from, from boats that have very strict rotational schedules. And we don't. Um, on Charter, for example, it was nothing to work a 16 hour day. Right. You yeah. know, I mean, you've got guests on and you're up before them and you're to bed after them. So yeah. long days. And um, right now we're, we're um, the 108 is in the shipyard and we'll have some pretty long days at the shipyard. Yeah. You know, I mean, my think, thankful, thankful to my crew um, that, you know, they're supporting what's going on in the shipyard now so that I can come here and I can do this. Um, but yes, very long days. Um, uh, sometimes multiple days in a row before you get time off. But that's also something that um, I think needs to change a little bit in the industry because there is a, a, a high turnover in this industry and a lot of it is um, because of that. Uh, right, and so yes. it's, it's something that I'm wanting to... Do you think to, it burns people out sometimes? Oh my God, yes. Yeah. It's, it, it absolutely. And, you know, we already miss birthdays and anniversaries and special events and holidays because we choose this profession. But, but... We also burn out because we are working long days without time off. And now, some of the better program, better programs and bigger boats have rotation, and that's great. Yeah. Um, and and I think that even the smaller boats need to think about adopting that. Right. Um, because if if you start looking at the math of what it costs to burn through three chief, chief stews a year. You could probably the cost that it, it, it you incur in turning over or hiring a new employee mm -hmm. would probably be the salary of another one. Right. You know. And then he would need so, to. Yeah. So I really think that that um, even the smaller yachts should consider uh, adopting a rotational schedule. But to answer your question, do we work more than a forty-hour work week? We probably work an eighty-hour work week. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right. This is the last one now uh, because we are running a little bit out of time. Um, uh, where are we? There's one I wanted to ask you here, which is from Seth R. Barron, um, and he, he or she, I'm assuming a Seth is a he, but I don't know, uh, asks, is it difficult to manage a relationship, bearing in mind what you just said, you're out on the boat a lot, you're away a lot, you're doing a, a huge amount of hours, how does that affect you from a relationship oh, point of view? Hard. Yeah. It's very hard. I mean, think about it. I, I... I can't think of many men that would want <laughs> to date somebody that's gone all the time. Right, but, yeah, of course. You know? right. yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's very difficult. And this is a lifestyle, and this is something that, that a lifestyle that I've, I've chosen. So do you think that makes it very difficult for you then to have relationships? Well, am I going to go there? And well, of course, it's a, through, we're into a private area here. No, you can edit but all this you out. Know what? No, no, it's, it's, it's okay. Um, I've, I never announced it, so this is you're, you're getting insider oh, okay. information. Go on. <laughs> the engineer standing over there is not just my engineer, but he is also uh -huh. he's my boyfriend. No way. He is. Oh, you're a lucky man. <laughs> what am I going to say? Lucky, lucky man. So I guess that kind of works then, because you're both in the boat together. It does, but we're never any more than 108 feet apart, and sometimes I want to kill him. Well, there is that as well. <laughs> there is that as well. So well. you know, it's. It's either it, it's it's, it's all or nothing. Of, it's it's all or nothing. Yeah, yeah because yeah. I could I would never expect um, him or any man to put up with me being gone as much as I am, and and it wouldn't work for me either. Right. I mean, I don't I, I wouldn't want to be attached to someone that I could never see. That would yeah. just be very frustrating. Yeah. But um, on the other hand, we are never more any more than 108 <laughs> feet apart. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So sometimes uh -huh. um, it might be it might be a little difficult, but. Um, it works. Yeah. It works. That's fantastic. Yeah. Kelly, that has been absolutely brilliant. Thank ah, you so, thank so you much. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's a this pleasure. Awesome. It's a pleasure. So don't forget that and Kelly we'll is on. We'll do another one. We will do. Well, we've got a bit more time. Oh we can do another one. We're going to do another one. Yeah, yeah. cool. Okay, we'll ask some more questions. I'll get some more some more questions up. Yeah. So don't forget Kelly on Instagram. We'll put the links to those uh, channels, Instagram, TikTok, etc., in the description. Give her a follow. Thank you. And thank you again for your time. Ah, so much. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. We will catch you on the news real soon. Bye. Take care. Yeah, bye-bye.